Hello everyone, I'm Aliso with EECC Travels and I'm coming at you from beautiful California with the Pacific Ocean behind me. So sitting here looking at the ocean and thinking about cruising. And today we're gonna talk about how to pick the best cabin on a cruise ship and which cabins to avoid. So first off, let's talk about what kind of cruise cabins you have on a cruise ship. There are four different types of cabins. Number one is an interior. This is your least expensive cabin. It is on the inside of the ship and has no windows. The second type is an ocean view. These are typically on the lower decks of the ship or all the way forward and they do have either a porthole window or a large picture window. The third type, which is the most popular type of cruise ship cabin, is a balcony or veranda cabin. There's lots of these on all modern cruise ships on just about every deck and you're gonna get them forward, aft, midship, facing the back, all kinds of different directions. And the fourth type is a suite. So these can start as small as a junior suite that just gives you a little bit more space, all the way up to very fancy owner suites, deluxe suites, two-story suites with slides in them. I mean, crazy stuff, crazy stuff but that's not really important in this video because what we're talking about is going to relate to any type of cruise ship cabin because we're talking about location. So what do we avoid when choosing a cabin? There are certain areas of the ship you just don't wanna be in. It could be a beautiful cabin, but if it's in the wrong place and you're hearing noise all the time, you're gonna be uncomfortable or miserable or it could just downright ruin your cruise. The main area I'm gonna tell you to avoid is being underneath the pool deck. There is so much activity on the pool deck, day and night, it's always gonna have a noise factor. You're gonna have kids playing in the pool, screaming, um, deck parties with loud music. In the middle of the night even, you're gonna hear chairs scraping across the pool deck as the crew comes in and cleans the deck and gets it ready for the next day. So don't book under a pool deck. That is my number one most important tip is don't do that. Number two tip is look for the promenade area. And this is gonna vary by the layout of the cruise ship. Some ships have a two deck promenade, some have a three deck promenade, some just have one. You don't wanna be above or below the promenade because promenade areas are loud. <laughs> Sometimes they can be quiet, but for the most part, these are loud areas. This is where people are going to congregate at night. This is where interior parties are going to be held. Um, there's always going to be music, sometimes just light music, sometimes very loud music. So those promenade decks are not something you want to be near. Your deck plan is going to be your best friend in choosing where you want to be. So don't just look at the deck that you're on. Look at what's above you and what's below you, and sometimes even what's two decks below you or two decks above you. The third area that's really can be loud and you want to avoid is being above or below music venues. So this is going to be especially at night if you're in early sleeper. If you're one of those people that goes to bed 9, 10 o'clock, you're not going to get good sleep if you're near a music venue. Uh, we're talking live music venues and dance clubs because those, especially dance clubs, can go into 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. You're not going to sleep if you're near that. Now, if you're one of those people who goes to those venues, then this isn't a problem for you because you're going to be out, you're going to be enjoying those venues, and they're going to shut down by the time you're ready to go to bed. But if you're someone who goes to bed before these places close, definitely avoid them. The next area is the theater. So the theater is going to be a very used area. They can start very early in the morning with presentations, but the main thing is at night. Your big production shows can start as late as 10, 15 at night and last for an hour or longer than that. So again, if you're one of those people that goes to bed early, you're gonna wanna avoid staying near the theater. This actually happened to us one time and we were right above the theater 
above. See, the, you don't always have to be below. We were above the theater and we had to wait until the production was over to even think about going to bed. The next area you want to avoid can be a little tricky to find and that is crew areas. So when you're looking at a deck plan, if you see an area on a deck that is blank or grayed out, those are gonna be crew areas. Again, we made this mistake and that's why I'm telling you about it, especially this Especially this holds true in interior cabins because interior cabins will very often butt up to crew areas or have crew areas running behind the interior cabins and it can be very noisy. One time we were in an interior cabin, loved the cabin, but come to find out there was this walkway going behind our cabin that the crew was using all night long. And we could hear doors opening and closing. We could hear items being dropped on the floor and it was difficult to sleep in there. So make sure you're looking at those grayed out or blank areas when choosing a cabin. Lastly, cabins to avoid and this one I'm going to say doesn't bother me, but does bother a lot of people, so I'm including it here, and that's connecting cabins. Of course, if you are needing connecting cabins, you want these. If you've got a family that needs to spread out into two cabins, these are awesome. But if you're just two people cruising, you may not want that connecting cabin because some ships you may hear noise in between the two cabins. Now I can say from personal experience, I have stayed in connecting cabins where I was not using the connection and I didn't hear any noise coming out of that other cabin. I might've just had good neighbors, not sure. But for me, this is not a big deal, but it is for others. How do you know what's a connecting cabin? If you look at the deck plans, there's always gonna be a mark. There'll either be a, a line in between the cabins like this or um, an arrow in between, but there's gonna be some sort of marker that indicates that the cabins are connecting. Okay, so we've talked about what cabins not to stay in. Now, how do we choose the right cabin? Here's what I'm gonna say. Midship, mid-deck. And what I mean, what do I mean by that? Okay, midship's pretty easy. Forward, aft, midship. Those are gonna have the most stability, number one. They're the most popular cabins. Also, you've got a shorter walking distance to things at the front of the ship or things at the back of the ship. Mid-deck means like this. So, you typically will have activities at the bottom, your interior activities, so your promenade decks and things like that are gonna be on lower decks, and then you've got your pool deck and activities above here. There's gonna be a sweet spot right in the middle and that is where I usually choose my cabin. So midship, mid-deck, that right there area is gonna be the quietest because you've got cabins above you and below you. And you've got more convenience because you can go, you can use your stairs instead of waiting for an elevator all the time. So if you've got only two decks above you to get to the pool deck, very little stairs, or two decks below you to get to promenade, very little stairs, again, distance is very important when you're talking about basically a floating city. So that's my opinion. Now, what if you're booking late and there are no midship cabins available? This does happen because those cabins do go first. If you have to choose between forward or aft, I am always going to go aft. I feel less movement aft. To me, aft doesn't feel any different than midship. Forward, on the other hand, we have stayed in cabins that were two cabins from the front and we felt motion there. Was it enough motion to bother us? No, it wasn't. But there is that fact that you are gonna feel more motion forward than you will aft. At least that's my experience. When choosing a cabin, it's typically gonna come down to budget. Of course, the interior cabins are the least expensive. The suites are sometimes unattainable for a lot of people. So it's a lot of times that balcony or ocean view where people are making a decision. If you're choosing ocean view, then you're pretty much going to be on lower decks. So how do you choose? Well, let's see, For this is just an example. We've got ocean view cabins on deck one and deck two. Which is better, deck one or deck two? In my personal experience, I'm gonna say deck one. And here's why, deck two, 
is typically below your common areas. It could be, you could have dining rooms above you, you could have the galley above you, again, crew areas, don't wanna be around those, things like that. So deck one, typically, you're gonna have cabins above you, and then you're gonna have crew cabins below you. So we have stayed on deck one when we have chosen an ocean view. It was very quiet, and it's also very convenient for tender boarding because you're getting off at the bottom of the ship. So you don't have to, when you're getting back on board for tender ports or actually for any ports, because typically your pier is gonna be low as well. You don't have to wait for an elevator if you're way up on deck 12 or 13. You literally get on the ship and there's your cabin. So deck one to me is very convenient. Now there are some cabins that are specialty and this is gonna apply mainly to Carnival and that is the cove balcony so the newer carnival ships all have these cove balconies they're really cool i really like them a lot because you're getting a balcony cabin one at a lower price and two on a lower deck so you're lower to the ocean and i really have enjoyed these cove balconies because you're standing out on your balcony and the ocean is so close you hear it so much louder than if you're on those upper decks but like I just said, those cove balconies are all on deck two or deck, anyway, the second deck of the ship. It may not be called deck two, but we're gonna call it deck two. They're all gonna be on deck two where you have common spaces above you. So if you do want one of these cove balconies, just look very carefully at what is above you. Restaurants, in my opinion, are the best thing to have above you because they're usually done by say nine o'clock. Uh, eating in there, 9.30 at the latest, they clean up and it's done. And then usually you're up by the time breakfast is starting. So if you have to choose something above you, a restaurant is good, guest services, shore excursions, desks, things like that that don't have a lot of uh, volume, a lot of movement are good to have above you. So now raises the question, well, what about guaranteed cabins? Because that is something that sometimes if you're booking last minute, you may have to take a guaranteed or the cruise line will give you an option that for this price, you can choose your own cabin. But if you take this lower price and let us choose your cabin for you, then you're going to save some money. And that can be an attractive idea. Have we done guaranteed cabins? Yes, we have. Um, as a travel agent, we have attended travel agent events and you cannot choose your cabin in those. It is whatever the cruise line decides to give you. So we've done many of those events and had assigned cabins, never had a problem with them. Um, we've also just on our own decided to do guarantees, never had a problem with them. But again, then that kind of negates everything I just said. So if you're one of those people that doesn't mind where your cabin is, go with that guarantee. But if you're a new cruiser and you're just getting into cruising or you are very particular about your space, never take that guarantee. Because while we have had good experiences with guaranteed cabins, I have heard people not have so great experiences with guaranteed cabins. It can happen. But typically, really, is there a terrible cabin on the ship? That's gonna be an objective opinion. Also, this applies to upgrades. A lot of cruise lines give you the opportunity to either take an upgrade if one is available. I know Holland America and some others do this, that you can just click a box and say, yeah, give me an upgrade if one's available, and that can happen. And if that's the case, then the they're going to assign the upgrade for you, or you can choose to bid to upgrade. Lots do this as well. Royal Caribbean does this, um, Norwegian does this, where you can say, yes, I would like that higher cabin, and I'm willing to pay X number of dollars for that higher cabin. And if you win a bid, again, that cabin's gonna be assigned to you. So a lot of factors come into, do I take the cabin that I very carefully picked out? And if that's important to you, then stick with that cabin. Don't allow upgrades, don't take those guarantees. Or if you're okay with moving, go for it. I know one time we, remember I mentioned that very, very forward cabin, I had this great midship balcony and I did a bid to upgrade for a spa balcony and we won. And so we were assigned two cabins from the front, the most forward we have ever stayed on a cruise. Did it bother us? No, not really. I did feel more motion, but it didn't bother us. And those spa benefits were well worth it. 
So weigh everything whenever you're looking at how to choose a cabin and see what's right for you. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're interested, we have 101 cruise tips. It is gonna be linked down below. If you would like those, just click the link and download the cruise tips and we'll see you next time. Bye.